honestly can't. I mean, scruples. Really? Cootie bugs? From girls? Seriously? Scruples, how would you like it if you got some cootie bugs? Welcome back, folks, to episode three on microbes. This sample was taken from one of the most disgusting places on the human body. You are seeing epithelial cells, bacteria, and lots of round cells. What do you think they are? And where do you think they came from? Yes, it is snot. That's what you're looking at. And that's how we collect snot. From a snotty person. Well, okay, a person full of snot. But it's full of epithelial cells from the nose and bacteria. And these white cells are the fabulous cells from your immune system that are busy trying to ward off the antigens and the bacteria that have entered your nose. Look at the high level of cellular activity inside these immune cells. They're locked and loaded and ready for action to help you get well, even though it takes a few days. White cells are cool. Now, one way to get microorganisms to view under the microscope is to use uh, hay. And here I have some dried grass and hay that I collected from a field and uh, you can actually make what we call a hay infusion and if you take some of this and put it in distilled water uh, don't use tap water, use distilled water and actually boil it on the stove for a couple of hours maybe you can see some of the little microbes swimming around in here and that came from this hay infusion so you boil this on the stove for 30 minutes or an hour and then you put it all in a container, I have a jar here a glass jar and uh, after a week or so you'll start to see some microorganisms that are growing in this, these fluids. And so uh, you can make slides out of this. Refer back to episode one on how we taught you how to make slides and use glass slides and cover slips. And that's what I have here in the microscope. And you can get a good collection of all kinds of different microbes from this hay infusion. Now to keep your hay infusion healthy, uh, you want to cover it but put holes in the lid so that uh, air can be exchanged with your hay infusion. That way it won't spill out of your container when you move it around, but it'll stay healthy because it'll have access to oxygen. Now, there is an alternate method for making a hay infusion. Uh, you may not want to boil hay on your stove, or you might not give permission to boil hay on your stove. And so what I've done is I've come outside and I've come to a wet place in my garden and I've set a tray uh, with hay and grass and leaves in it. And uh, this is an area right next to the sprinkler. And so I know that this will stay wet for some period of time. But maybe a couple of weeks after you set this up, you can start collecting liquid from here and putting it in a vial to take inside and try under the microscope. So you might also have good results at finding some great microbes in a situation like this, which is open to the environment. So this is something we can try and put under the microscope as well. By the way, the microbes that you see on the screen did come from the little hay infusion that I have out in the garden, in that wet spot in my garden. So uh, and we're going to show you some dark field shots of a couple of the microorganisms that we saw on here in, in a second. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to tell you how to make a dark field stop for your condenser. Now hopefully you have a microscope where the condenser comes down off of the uh, holder from below the stage. It's called a substage condenser. So what you want to do is take a piece of black construction paper and uh, with a pair of scissors you want to cut out a diaphragm, a solid piece of construction paper that will go uh, in the bottom of your condenser. Now you might say, well how big? Because all condensers vary in size. You want to make this uh, four-fifths the size of the opening 
in, in your condenser. In other words, you only want one-fifth of the outside of the light going into the condenser uh, that's not stopped by the dark field stop. So you'll have to play with it a little bit, but try to tape it as close to the glass uh, inside your condenser as possible. Like I say, it may take you a few tries to get the right size, but you should get a great dark field image, which is a lot of fun for imaging. And here's a couple of videos to show you what we're talking about. Here you see a tiny microorganism called Vorticella. This is in dark field. And this is from that sample that I collected from outside. And you can't see it because it's moving so quickly, but there are two fan-like structures near its mouth. It's, uh, it has a stalk on one end, which is holding it to a piece of decaying plant matter. And those very fast-moving uh, fans at the front of its mouth, and that's why you see things flying by it. They get caught up in the circulation. Uh, but we'll talk more about Vorticella and show you a better image of Vorticella in a second. But this was from the specimen that I, uh, the pond water or hay infusion that I have outside sitting in the wet part of my garden. Here is another Vorticella. Again, you can see the respiratory current and things getting caught up in the current and flying by his mouth. Some of those things actually do enter his mouth. But look at how long the stalk is. He's got a very long stalk and he's attached to a piece of decaying plant matter. Uh, Vorticella is well known as a microorganism uh, that removes heavy metals from the water. And so scientists actually grow Vorticella and they will plant it into ponds that are near company sites where um, heavy metals were used in processing or manufacturing. So Vorticella is a very important little microbe, little microorganism, and here it is growing in the little pond water that I had outside, the hay infusion that I had outside. So those dark field videos that you just saw were taken from the hay infusion from outside in the wet spot in my garden. And so even a simple hay infusion like that can produce wonderful organisms like Vorticella, which you just saw. So here is my substage condenser, which I've removed from my microscope. And we're going to give you a close-up on how to convert this regular bright field substage condenser to a dark field condenser. Because they sell specialized dark field condensers, and they're very expensive. But here I have a bright field condenser, and it has a little swing-out uh, carrier for a, a, a filter, but we're not going to worry about that now. And here's where I want my dark field stop to go. And of course, you've used a piece of construction paper uh, to cut out a small disc and, and try to make the disc as circular as possible. I'm not that gifted with a pair of scissors, so you might notice that it's not a perfect circle. And here I have a disc already uh, taped to a piece of tape. And so my, my goal is to tape this across this opening and to leave a small portion, maybe one-fifth of the total opening here, uh, open to light. And so I'm going to just set this down for a second while I tape this across. And I'm going to try to center this as much as possible. And so your dark field stop should look something like that. And now you've sort of put a dark field stop in there such that when you put this back in your microscope, uh, you will have a dark field effect on your microscope. So now I've put my condenser back on my microscope, substage condenser. And if your condenser does not come off, I mean obviously it's easier to put your dark field stop on the bottom of a condenser when you take it out of the microscope. If yours does not come off, then just try to approximate it on there, but make sure that you're leaving a space around the opening for the light to come through to give you the dark field effect. Now I need to show you something important about substage condensers because they come in varying strengths. We'll call it an optical strength. Uh, there's a term numerical aperture, but we're not going to go into that. But the strength of the condenser can be either a 0.9 or it might say a 1.25. And here we have a 1.25 condenser. And sometimes with a 1.25 condenser, and it might be printed here, it might be printed up here, and this is the strength of the condenser. 
When you want to go to a higher magnification objective like a 40x or a 60x, uh, your dart field stop might not work and so you might actually have to put a drop of water on the top of the condenser and bring the condenser up so that it touches the slide so that water is distributed across the slide. Uh, and this is to allow the light to come into the substay into the into the specimen and then into the objective or lens and so if you if you have a 0.9 condenser you probably don't need a drop of water if you have a 1.25 condenser you probably need to put a drop of water on and so I'm just going to back this away and you can see my condenser here and I put a drop of water on here and this allows me to use my 40x objective and I also have here a 60x objective. So I just bring my slide back in, you can see it touches the water. Now I can go to my 40x objective and I get a nice image through the microscope and also on the screen. Uh, and then I could go to my 60x objective which is a very dry, high dry and I also get a nice dark field effect with the 60x. So just be aware that some condensers may require that you put a drop of water on them to touch below on the bottom of the slide. Now I want to show you something else that's really cool about microbes. Some of them grow on the sides of trees and you can scrape them off with a spatula and put them on a slide and look at them under the microscope. Now here you see on the trunk of this tree this green patina or coloring, those are microbes. Those are uh, probably algae, blue-green algae, and uh, maybe diatoms growing on the side of a tree. And you can find this in your own backyard sometimes if you live in a temperate zone. And we're going to collect some of those. So first to assist, I'm just going to wet this down a little bit. That helps me grab the cells off of there. And then I'm just going to reach in with a spatula and very gently I'm going to scrape up along the side of the tree and now I have a specimen here that I'm going to put on a slide and we'll look at it under the microscope. Okay, so I placed a drop of distilled water on my slide and now I'm just going to put my specimen in that distilled water there, move it around a little bit, and now we're going to go cover slip this with a cover glass. First we're going to show you these cells under dark fields and uh, there they are, these are blue-green algae cells and um, they grow in big colonies. These have been broken off and I'll show you a big colony in a second. But I just want to show you something very exciting. These things do something which is called autofluorescence. They glow a particular light, in this case a red light, the chloroplasts, which are the little organelles inside the cells that do photosynthesis. They glow a, a, a particular light when you hit them with a short wavelength of light. So we're going to hit them with UV light and you'll see that they're going to glow red, which is uh, in the infrared region of the spectrum. So here they are, these are the chloroplasts of those very cells that you just saw a second ago glowing under autofluorescence and you can see other cells glowing sort of a, uh, a bluish purple. And uh, so all these different kinds of microbes, if they're photosynthetic, they will glow if you hit them with UV light. Look at these beautiful cells here glowing and then the red ones, these are the red chloroplasts from the blue-green algae and this is another kind of an algae uh, also glowing as a result of the light that we're hitting them with. We'll go back to dark field so you can see what these look like under dark field and you can see they're pretty washed out. This light is pretty bright but uh, those are that's a colony of cells that uh, looks like this in dark field and then when you hit them with the UV light they glow a particular light based on the light that you hit, when, hit them with. So that's pretty cool. Now here is a huge colony of cells all together. You can see the green, the green cells, there. Those, that's the chloroplasts that are glowing in there because those are the photosynthetic cells. And so let's switch from dark field to fluorescence and now look at how that whole colony is glowing with autofluorescence. They are giving off light when they're hit with a particular light. These are not stained in any way. They're actually just giving off light as a result that we're hitting them with. They give off a longer wavelength of light than the one we're hitting them with. So that's autofluorescence.